Like I was, I yeah. sat on the couch and drank beers and yeah. ordered wings over and passed out. Like, <laughs> And this is where things really, and I mean really get weird in our story. Quote unquote, you start thinking about, are you really happy? And is it really as fulfilling as it was? It just got to the point where it wasn't and all the other BS that came with it, it wasn't worth it. Over 10 plus years ago, there was a young man who wasn't just a five-star recruit, he was ranked as the seventh best overall recruit in the class of 2013. To give you some even more insight and perspective on just how good he was, he had an overall scout grade according to 24-7 Sports of 100 overall. We're not talking about 97, 98, 99, no, a perfect score of 100. Not too bad. He was six foot four, 230 pounds, could spin the ball. He was the perfect and ideal prospect for the NFL. Everybody thought he was gonna play a couple years of college football, have a great and outstanding career, and he was gonna go to the NFL and make tens of millions of dollars and be a good quarterback. The expectations for this guy, and this might be understating it here, they were through the roof. But what if I were to tell you this same guy, seventh best overall recruit in the nation, six foot four, 230 pound quarterback, never even played one snap, not even one, in the NFL. Well, if I had to take a wild guess here, I'd assume you'd be asking a question like this. Matt, what in the crap happened, man? What went wrong? And that is a great and fantastic question, and I have an even better answer. A lot went wrong. This is without a shadow in my doubt, one of the most fascinating stories I've ever covered due to, uh, well, I'll just show you this short snippet here. Matt wrote a clip. Like I was, I yeah. sat on the couch and drank beers yeah. and ordered wings over and passed out. Like <laughs> that right there is just one of the many things we're going to dive into and talk about. And there's many questions people have about this guy even till this day. But however, it all circles back to the one, and I mean the one big question we're going to try to get to the bottom of in today's video. What really happened to Christian Hackenberg? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you are having a great and fantastic day. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. And I want to give a major shout out to Jay Tat. Hope I'm saying that correctly. 8323. I'm just going to call you Jay, my man. And he's the reason we're making this video. He commented on one of the previous videos. Yo, can you do a vid on Christian Hackenberg? He's from my hometown. I tell you what, man, when I saw that comment, the feeling I got... It's hard for me to describe it more specifically here. When I saw that name, immediate flashbacks. It intrigued me for two reasons. One, because that's a name I haven't heard of in a while. And two, I don't even know what happened myself, or at least before I was doing my research for this video. And this video took quite a bit of research just due to how weird his story actually is. Yet again, shout out to my man Jay. And if you have any recommendations on a player or situation you want to see a video on, leave them down below. And more than likely, as you can see, we'll make it. As always, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here. But all right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now without further ado, let's get in. Man, oh man, good old Christian Hackenberg. And you already know, I'm just going to jump straight into it. To get into his story, we got to throw it all the way back to where things started. You know your boy Matt likes to run through high school fairly quickly because there's nothing really to talk about. You know how all these recruits do. They dominate high school competition, so let's just get that out of the way. He grew up in the city of Fork Union, Virginia, and that's where he played his high school football at, their military school. He was a stud and he balled out, and that was good enough to earn him a five-star recruit ranking easily, and he was top 10 in the nation, seven overall, like we stated in the intro. And of course, course, number one quarterback recruit in all the country, and it wasn't even close. In other terms here, Christian Hackenberg in high school, he was that dude. And you might could even go as far as to saying he was the chosen one. Well, now that I say that, I guess you couldn't due to how his story turned out, but that's a little foreshadowing. We'll get to that later. In high school, at least, he was the man, good-looking dude, star quarterback, top 10 in the nation, probably got a lot of girls. You know how it goes. And I remember this like it was yesterday. He winds up deciding to commit and sign with Penn State. And this is where our story already gets controversial, and I know what you're sitting here saying. Well, Matt, what's controversial about a five-star recruit going to Penn State? At the time, I'm going to remind some of y'all, when he signed with Penn State, that's when they were getting hard with these sanctions. We're not going to dive into that too much. Yeah, they were losing a couple of recruits, but the big one in Christian Hackenberg, he decided to stick with them. And it paid dividends because in 2013, he was named the starting quarterback as a true freshman. I think it goes without being said, that is not something you see every day. So that was already a huge accomplishment itself. And in that 2013 season, he most definitely had his ups and downs, had a lot of bad passes that had you shaking your head. But remember, he's a true freshman. That's just growing pains. And although he had some bad passes, he also had some passes where you're like, man, 
once this guy gets into his sophomore and junior year, he's going to be a baller. Or at least, that's what we thought. I'll show you his numbers though for 2013. Completed roughly 59% of his passes. Eh, not, I wouldn't classify it as good, even as a freshman, but not bad. Roughly 3,000 passing yards, that's decent, and 20 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. So we had a 2 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio, but you kind of expect that out of a true freshman, and I can't emphasize that enough. This is common knowledge. When you got a, for example, rookie quarterback in the NFL, or a true freshman playing big time D1 football, you're going to give them the benefit of the doubt, or at least you should. All in all, though, for that freshman year, if I had to give him a grade, I'd give him a B plus. Need to throw this in there as well. He was also named Big Ten Freshman of the Year. And here's what a lot of people have a hard time grasping with guys like Christian Hackenberg. When he first arrived on campus at Penn State, nobody exactly knew who he was. Yeah, he played football, but he wasn't a big time hotshot. Yeah, he was a five star recruit, but that doesn't matter when you get to college. That evaporates. You gotta put on and perform for the new college you're at. And within the span of a couple of months, he went from nobody knowing him to Big Ten Freshman of the Year, and he can't go anywhere on campus without somebody asking for a picture every 35 seconds. And he even spoke on this in a podcast he did with Adam Brenneman, and we already made a video on him. I think it was either last year or two years ago. He has a cool story himself, but he also has a YouTube channel. I'm going to pop it up right here. He does podcasts with all these college players, so feel free to check it out for yourself. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description. And he also played with Christian Hagenberg, so it gives you good insight and perspective. And if you want to see this entire podcast with Christian Hagenberg, it's called Next Up with Adam Brenneman. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link down below. But Matt, wrote a clip. The first couple months of class, like I'd walk to class without headphones on and I'd be talking to people. <laughs> and then like, <laughs> By the time spring ball rolled around going into my sophomore year, like I was head down, yeah. headphones on, not looking because I felt like everyone's looking at you. Like, it's just one of those things where that's a huge shift. And like where I grew up, super small town. I said this before I was on, like, I passed more cows than I did people going to school. <laughs> and it, to your point, it happened so quick. You'd catch me at a frat house week one through six, mm -hmm. but then seven, eight, nine, like. I wasn't there because yeah. I couldn't even, I couldn't even enjoy myself. Oh, you were getting mobbed. Yeah, I couldn't enjoy my time with my yeah. guys. So yeah, there's that. And you're probably sitting there thinking, well, Matt, this story sounds great so far. And it does. Ball down in high school, ball down in Penn State. He's a celebrity on campus. But unfortunately for Christian Hackenberg, this was the pinnacle of maybe not just his football career, but his life. And it's hard to fathom because you would think Christian Hackenberg, after his freshman season, he would develop more and he'd get better. But... He just simply didn't. Fast forward time into 2014, he had what I'm going to label as a sophomore slump. And maybe it was due to all the pressure. Maybe it was due to teams. They had a scouting report on him. I don't know what you would chalk it up to. But here's what I do know. As much as I hate to say this, he wasn't very good. His completion percentage wound up dropping to roughly 56%. And his passing yards, they essentially stayed the same. However, this was the major and big red flag. And you'll see what I'm talking about. His touchdowns dropped from 20 to only 12. And his interceptions went up from 10 to 15. He threw for more interceptions in 2014 than he had touchdowns. You don't need me to sit up here and ridicule him and criticize him and tell you, hey, that's awful. You know it is. He was bad. Very, 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 very bad. Granted, we'll throw us in here because a lot of people wouldn't. His offensive line might have been worse than him. And I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. I don't care if you got Tom Brady back there. And we've seen it with Brady. If he doesn't have a good offensive line or a quarterback doesn't have a good offensive line, they're not going to be good. And that's what happened here in that 2014 season. He got sacked 44 times. And don't get me wrong, I'm not making excuses for him, but he took a beating that year. And here's what Christian Hackenberg had to say about that sophomore season. I was in my darkest place my sophomore year. I'm getting, you know, hit 25 times a game and yeah. sacked six to eight. Like, it was just physically demanding, mentally demanding. Um, and I just curled into a ball and didn't talk to anybody. I mean even the games we won, like how many times did you guys catch? Like I was, I yeah. sat on the couch and drank beers and yeah. ordered wings over and passed out. Like <laughs> yeah. that's what I did after games. And I didn't talk to anybody. Didn't spend time with my parents. Didn't call my high school coach back. Like didn't talk to anybody. I was, that was bad. <laughs> I don't know why that cracks me up, but just imagine Christian Hagenberg going out there balling out and three hours later, He's watching some other college football team cracking open some beers and eating chicken wings. Do not get me twisted. I'm not comparing them, but the way he told that story right there, it reminds me a lot of something of Johnny Menzel would say. And you're probably thinking, man, Penn State must have sucked that year, but I wouldn't say they sucked. They were just average. But we all know for their standard, not acceptable. And in that 2014 season, they did go 7-6. and six. And here's why I say they didn't suck. They lost to Michigan by five points, lost to the Ohio State or Lilbro State now, in double overtime and lost to Maryland by one point and Illinois by two points. 
in other terms here, they had about roughly four games where the ball bounces one way or another. You're talking about a team that could have went 10 and three, maybe. Granted, I'm playing the what if game here, but you get what I'm saying. They weren't getting beat by 20, 30 points every single game, and they did win seven that year. But as we all know, seven and six, although Penn State isn't a national title contender, that doesn't live up to their standards. And I remember this like it was yesterday. After that 2013 season, not 2014, but 2013, there was talks about Christian Hackenberg being the number one overall pick in the NFL draft in a couple of years when he can declare. But fast forward time to after that 2014 season that was miserable, a lot of people started having their question marks and rightfully so. I have a rule of thumb. I've done these story videos for I think five or six years now. Whenever a guy, when I'm looking at their stats on a year in to year out basis, whenever they progressively get worse, not better, but worse, that's a red flag. And not just 99%, but 100% of the time when a guy's stats get worse, that's an indicator that he's not ready for the NBA or the NFL. Anyways though, Christian Hackenberg, he didn't even have a choice after 2014. He had to come back for his third year in 2015 to Penn State. And I wish I could sit up here and say, oh man, he turned it around, but he really didn't. His completion percentage, yet again, dropped to 53.5%. Not good. Only at 2,500 passing yards, had 16 touchdowns, two, only six interceptions. So it was nice to see he cleaned that up. Unfortunately, though, for Penn State, they did end the year on a four-game losing streak, which resulted in them going 7-6. and six. They started out 7-2, and two, but obviously lost the last four, so made it look really bad at the end there. And Christian Hackenberg, he already made it up in his mind. He's declaring for the NFL draft, so this was the last and final year of Penn State. How do I say this nicely? He was wasn't exactly regarded as high as he once was and he wound up falling all the way down to the second round. He did get selected with the 51st overall pick which isn't too far down in the second round but unfortunately his biggest nightmare or any quarterback's biggest nightmare came true. He got selected by the New York Jets. Yeah, I think it goes without being said. I I'm not even gonna explain why that's a quarterback's biggest nightmare. If you know, you know, that's all I'm gonna say. It's where quarterback's dreams and aspirations, they go to die. And when I was doing all my research for this video, I couldn't rationalize why the New York Jets would have taken him in the second round. It still doesn't make any sense to this day. And it has nothing to do with Christian Hagenberg whatsoever. I thought he was a decent prospect, but it has everything to do with, including Hagenberg, they had four quarterbacks on their roster. It just didn't make any sense whatsoever, but I digress. He signed a four-year deal for $4.6 million. That's a good chunk of change there. So after taxes taken home about eh, roughly $2.5 million, and he got a signing bonus of $1.6 million. And the money's all fine and dandy, that's great. But the problem with this was, and Hackenberg even attested to this, he wasn't even given an opportunity. The New York Jets, being the New York Jets, like I said, had four quarterbacks on the roster. And take a wild guess who was the four-string quarterback. You know who it was. Hackenberg. So this man wasn't just fighting for even the backup spot. He was trying to get the third string quarterback spot. At the time, he was behind Ryan Fitzpatrick, Geno Smith, and Bryce Petty. And for his first 15 regular season games, he was listed as inactive. Fast forward in time to the 2017 season, he was somewhat given a slight chance in a what I'm going to label as a mini shot. Hackenberg wound up starting not one, but two preseason games and played in all four. But in his third preseason start, which was big, he threw not one, but two pick sixes. That was obviously not a good look, and he wound up getting replaced by Bryce Petty at the time, but Petty got hurt, so Hagenberg got to go back in. And when the season rolled around, Hagenberg was beat out by Bryce Petty, not for the starting spot, but for the backup spot. If that was confusing, let me dumb it down here to make a long story short. Christian Hackenberg for the Jets, his entire career there was a third or fourth string quarterback. He played in the preseason though, didn't exactly do good. And I don't know, maybe if he would have done really good, maybe if he would have went 18 for 20 or four touchdowns, he would have got a shot, who knows? It's really hard to gauge the preseason though, because if you're balling out in the preseason, well, most people chop it up to, hey, it's the preseason, who cares? Here's what Hackenberg himself had to say with his time with the Jets. And yet again, this is courtesy of the Adam Brennan and podcast on YouTube. So it was me, Gino, Fitz and Bryce and Chan Gailey was there who I love Chan as an ex and O's guy. I love him as a coach, but like he really wanted Fitz back and he wanted Fitz because they just came off a pretty decent year the year before. So like there just wasn't opportunity. Mm -hmm. So like I'm basically there trying to find myself and then like trying to figure out a role within the whole organization. Yeah. Because obviously there's people in the organization that invested enough in me to pick me in the second round. But then, so there was just a little disconnect there. After not getting a real shot and opportunity with the Jets, they wound up trading him to the Oakland Raiders in 2018. He got traded in May, and literally the next month in June of 2018, he got waived. But that wasn't the end though, because only a couple months later, in August of 2018, he signed with the Eagles. 
his time with the Eagles didn't exactly go too well because a few months later they wound up waiving him as well which according to Hackenberg was very unfortunate because he wanted to stay there I ended up getting shipped up to Cincinnati like hated being away from from my wife he signed to the Bengals practice squad in 2018 and a few months later as well still in 2018 in November he was released from the practice squad and that right there ladies and gentlemen was the final nail in the coffin for Christian Hagenberg's NFL career. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not the end to his football career. Still, in the same year of 2018, in November, Christian Hagenberg, he wound up joining the AAF. AAF, also known as the Alliance of American Football, it was a league. He got drafted to the Memphis Express, and it didn't go so well. Unlike the NFL, he actually got a shot to play in some real deal serious games in the AAF, and it just wasn't good. In one of his first starts, he was 10 for 23 and had 87 passing yards and an interception. In that same game, he got pulled, or in other terms here, benched in the fourth quarter. His next two games after that, even worse. He combined going 32 for 62, which is roughly what, 52% completion percentage, had zero touchdowns to three interceptions, and he got benched and replaced by Zach Mettenberger. Man, oh man, Zach Mettenberger. That's a name I haven't heard of in a while. Maybe we should do a story on him. Getting back on track here, though, Hackenberg, he got benched, and not too long after, the AAF wound up shutting down completely. And this is where things really, and I mean really, get weird in our story. In the summer of 2020, Hackenberg winds up announcing that he's going to become a baseball player. Now, I'm going to assume a large portion of you are like myself when you heard he was transitioning over to baseball. What in the crap's going on here? According to Christian Hagenberg himself in an interview he did, here's what he stated about leaving football in general. Quote unquote, you start thinking about, are you really happy? And is it really as fulfilling as it was? It just got to the point where it wasn't and all the other BS that came with it, it wasn't worth it. So Hagenberg decided in, like I said, the summer of 2020 to hire a baseball trainer pretty much. And he got to where he could throw 93, 94 miles per hour, but he decided it wasn't worth pursuing. Here's what he stated in the same interview, quote unquote, if I threw 97 miles per hour, great, but I was like 93, 94, that's a dime a dozen now. Here's my whole take on the baseball decision. It seemed like something that just popped into his head at 2 a.m. and he's like, bingo, I'm gonna be a baseball player. And he hired a trainer and he was working hard at it and he came to a realization, you know what, this is dumb, why am I doing this? After the whole baseball situation, he decided to get a work for home job where he was doing cybersecurity. And while he was working in cybersecurity, which he stated he loved doing it, he was also a part-time real estate agent. Fast forward in time into March of 2021, this is when Hackenberg became a quarterback coach for Winslow Township High School. And he's dabbled into coaching a little bit, but he hasn't full-on decided if he really likes that he wants to pursue that full-time or like a serious real deal career is a better way to say it. But as far as the what's next for Christian Hackenberg, I'll let him take it from here. What's next for you now? Nah, I don't know, man. I mean, I, like I said, there's kind of a, a little bit of a self-discovery, you know, what I want to do, what I want to balance, like my personal enjoyment in life and, and the time commitments to those things. Mm -hmm. And then just really trying to get my my hands in a lot of different pots and, and, and really see what starts driving me. You know, like I said, I'm doing some technology stuff now working in that field. It's been really interesting and it's mm -hmm. been a cool way to push me, you know, dude, like, I don't know, man, I'm just rolling with the punches. You know me, that's kind of how I've always been. Mm -hmm. Keep my nose to the grindstone, you know, figure out some things that I like, you know, I, lo I love the coaching thing, you know, so there's, yeah, would you ever, you, that's tough too. It's like, a tough decision because it's a total coach. lifestyle change, yeah. but like there's, there's a lot of things that go into it, dude. But I think ultimately, you know, seeing how seeing how the deck shakes out and just yeah. plugging away, you know, we'll see. But hmm, interesting. Sounds like to me, he's throwing darts here. He's trying to figure out this is what I do like and this is what I don't like. And this is why I think it's extremely important, especially at a young age, to work a bunch of different type of jobs. It's great to go experience stuff, and more importantly, it's great to network because you never know when you're going to need somebody. And I think we can all relate to Christian Hackenberg here because aren't we all searching for something that brings us a lot of fulfillment and purpose? It seems like to me, I watched this entire podcast, of course, I'm not going to show it all because... You can go watch the podcast if you want to see it. Yet again, shout out to Adam Brenneman. I'll pop up his YouTube channel right here. Go check it out for yourself. But from what I gathered from this hour and a half long podcast is that Christian Hagenberg, I don't think he wants to be a head coach. He seems like an extremely cool dude and it sucks that football didn't work out, but this goes to show you a lot of these kids that go to college, 
they're not going to play the next level, and this is why education is important. All these kids nowadays are focused on the NIL. Well, this case right here is why NIL isn't everything. I've read some different reports, though, and the one thing that everybody agrees on is the reason Hagenberg wasn't successful in the NFL is due to accuracy. Quote, unquote, the accuracy was an issue. He never got a chance to work through it because you don't get time in the NFL. You either do it immediately or they're on to somebody else. And with all the stats and numbers I showed you, looking back on it, I think that nails it on the head. Dating back to his career at Penn State, he was never an accurate quarterback. And when he was playing in the NFL preseason games, wasn't accurate either. And then after that, he was playing for the Memphis Express. He only completed roughly 50% of his passes. Seems like a great guy, but on the football field, he just wasn't getting the job done. And here's what Christian Hagenberg had to say about his lack of success playing football. I can still be successful. It's not like that's life or death. At the end of the day, say what you want, but I accomplish more than 99% of people in that sport. To the level that I wanted? Absolutely not. But now, move on. It's a game. I'm thankful for football and my journey, but ultimately more excited about the next 40 years as opposed to the first 25. You're not going to make it if you just sob in the mope. I don't see how there's any other choice than to learn from it, build on it, and keep it moving. You get one shot at life, just live it and enjoy it. That's my whole thing. Woo! Hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta clap it up, clap it up, clap it up to Christian Hagenberg. I love that statement. You know how your boy Matt is. I don't like mopers, complainers, eeyores, whatever you want to call it. Newsflash, buddy! If you haven't figured this out by now, you will when you get in your 20s or 30s. Life's hard. And guess what? Every single one of you watching this video, you are going to get knocked down multiple times in your life. And you have a choice when you get knocked down. You can either sit there, cry and complain, or you can get up time after time after time. And that's being a winner. To me, I don't think success is always measured by your stats, achievements, and wins. I think sometimes it is how you respond and how you state to your core principles. I can't tell you enough how much I admire guys like Christian Hackenberg and in one of our recent story, Philip Sims, the former Alabama quarterback. Both of these guys, their careers didn't turn out the way they wanted them to, and they didn't mope and complain. They just started being a head coach and pursuing other things in life. I could sit up here for the next 10 minutes telling you how much I love it. I think you get the point. Let me know that's down below. But, uh, Robin!